Well, HIV has seen large increases in TB cases in the last few decades, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. Around a million and a half people died of tuberculosis in 2020 alone. Now, there's a new study being conducted into whether a universal test and treat approach in Zambia and South Africa could achieve steep reductions in HIV and TB. Well, let's get uh, the thoughts now of someone involved in the study, uh, UCT's Head of Pulmonology and Respiratory Services, Professor Kirtan Deda. Prof, good to have you uh, on ENCA. So test and treat, uh, how uh, ambitious is this for a treatment plan and how excited are we about the results? Uh, good morning, and thanks for having me on the show. And just a quick point of clarification. I wasn't part of this study, uh, but we are conducting our own uh, TB-related active case findings and I, case finding studies, and I can tell you about that just now. Mm. But I think before we launch into the results of the study, uh, because the, the findings in a way were negative, suggesting that uh, when, they, when, when people went out into the community to find TB cases, uh, they expected a reduction in TB burden and to find a lot of cases, thus reducing TB burden that didn't happen. But before we go into that finding, I think it's very important to quickly uh, define three very important concepts relevant to the study and TB in general in South Africa. The first is that of missing cases, and it's a startling statistic that we have 4 million newly ill undiagnosed or undetected TB patients globally. And in South Africa, that number is close between 100 and 150,000 patients. So that's staggering. The second thing is the, is the concept of passive case finding. And that's where uh, one self-declares one's symptoms. For example, if one wants HIV testing or one feels that one is ill uh, with TB, one presents to a clinic. We call that passive case finding. Mm. And uh, in contradistinction to that, uh, one or health services or one can go out into the community and actively test and find cases, usually using a mobile clinic or going door to door. And uh, these concepts are quite important to understand the study. Now, before we go into this study, there are many other studies that showed that active case finding for TB, in other words, if you go out into the community and you look for cases, you find them. And there are huge studies that have shown uh, that the that that strategy works it finds a lot of people with tb and reduces the burden of tb now in this particular study uh, the, it, this was nested into a larger hiv case finding study and when they went out into the community and they looked for hiv and linked those people to care they found the net effect of that was reduced burden of HIV, uh, likely due to reducing the transmission of HIV. So I think that's the first big learning point of the study. And despite these findings, we still don't have community-based active case finding uh, operating as a public health strategy in this country. And the same applies to TB. So yeah. I think the big message is that we need to change our public health strategy. Uh, although in this study, uh, the active case finding results for TB uh, were not what we expected. Uh, the key message for me is that they found a lot of TB when they went into the community. And this is in keeping with uh, a survey we did in South Africa, a national survey in 2018 and 2019. And in this survey, it was a door-to-door -door survey throughout the country. And not only did they find a lot of TB, uh, in other words, the rates of TB in this country were underestimated, but they found almost 60% of people detected with TB actually didn't have symptoms. So where and do we start trying to find a solution to this, Prof? Uh, because the research has been uh, being done uh, and going door to door is, is all good and well, but uh, those uh, living and suffering with TB are going to ask the question, well, what do we do about this then? Just before I say goodbye to you, what do we do with this information? Who do we address? How do we try and get a, a better solution if this isn't perhaps the way to go? Well, I think we need, for specifically regarding HIV and TB, because the, the three are interlinked, what we need is we need to implement active case finding strategies. So I think the Department of Health has to change its tactics and start 
initiatives where we, uh, we go into the communities and find HIV and TB. Secondly, we need better screening tests for TB. That's part of the problem. We don't have low cost um, tests that we can use on a wide scale to screen thousands of people. That's what we really need. One of the studies we are doing on a large scale involving almost 100,000 people across three countries is to use co um, computer assisted x-ray diagnosis uh, in order to diagnose TB. Uh, and this is portable digital x-ray and whether this actually will make a, a difference and is effective in reducing uh, cases and detecting them uh, uh, remains to be seen. We're also trialing a urine-based protein test. Uh, this was discovered at UCT, and uh, we're trialing a, a, a set of biomarkers consisting two or three proteins uh, to screen for TB in the community. Others are using different approaches. Uh, the other thing we need is we need active case finding uh, that is not symptom-based. We our t The TB rates are so high uh, in some of our communities that we need to forget about the symptom-based screening as the TREAT study showed, right? Uh, we just need to go in and screen universally for TB. And lastly, I think we need a multi-sectoral response uh, where we need to focus on the economy and improve living conditions. Uh, we need better screening and control for HIV because that drives TB. Mm -hmm. We need to reduce smoking uh, and exposure to biomass fuels. That's a big driver of TB. So it's not a, a magic bullet. It's not a single thing. We, we need to work at all these things if we are to really uh, get TB under control. And, of course, we have to address the stigma around HIV and TB as well. I would imagine, Prof, that would uh, increase the number of cases that are found if we can deal with the stigma around TB as well. But I'm going to say good, uh, good day to you for the moment, so UCT Professor uh, Kirtan Deda. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of research going into this, uh, and the good Prof is breaking it down for us, the problems they've found and what the solutions are. I appreciate Professor Kirtan Deda, uh, UCT's Head of Pulmonology and Respiratory Services.